they go do with me now I'm still a talk of the town Bring the scissors, I'm hooking them down We turn the smiles and the frowns You can't hop off We got a new episode of Talk of the Town Today we got a special guest Viral sensation You might know him to, I don't know, are you a gallus? Would you consider yourself a gallus? I just made this home Huh? I just made this on. Oh, yeah. But yeah, New York is in the building right now. Capella Gray, how you feeling? Feel great. Yeah, you do so many stuff. You do songwriting, mm -hmm. music. Mm -hmm. What else you do? What else? Let us know. What else? Yeah, just producing and all producing. that. You know what I'm saying? Just do whatever the record requires. Okay, okay, okay. So we're going to do rapid fire questions. I'm going to ask you some questions. Just say the first thing that comes to mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your favorite slang word. Slang word, mm -hmm. facts. Most used emoji. Um, the crying emoji. We laughing at niggas. <laughs> um, what age do you want to retire? Hmm. I never want to retire. I want to make music until I don't have any thoughts left. So you're gonna be on some Charlie Wilson, still on mm -hmm. the sexy so drill. Yep. <laughs> yep, yep. Well, okay. Facts, yep. All right. Facts. Most famous person in your phone. Um. I don't know. I don't know. I can... Anybody? Uh, uh, Chris Brown, probably. I don't know. Okay. That was a light flex. Chris Brown. Whatever. Okay, that's not. Uh... Um, do you tend to follow your head or your heart? My heart. Head. My head, for sure. I was to say, it, it gives head very much. Name a famous person. You wouldn't mind being a business... Name a famous person you wouldn't mind being in business with, like a business partner. 50 Cent. Um, what's something that still amazes you? Um, people knowing the lyrics to my songs. Really? Hmm? Bro, what? That amazing... No, I'm saying, like, Gallus was viral. Like, you think they forgot mm -hmm. about it? You wrote that in the trap. So, like, writing that in the trap and then he... Going and seeing okay. mad people at the same time, oh, knowing that's it. that's cute. So that still amazes you? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, what makes you nervous? Mm. People with unsure energy. Unsure. Just. Uh, I get that. Mm. Okay, and what's one thing on your bucket list? Um... Probably the jump out of the, the airplane thing. The, um, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. With the parachute or whatever. Parachute the fuck. thing. Mm -hmm. You still want to do that? That's, yeah, some people. So you're not scared of heights? No, I'm mad scared of heights. Okay. But, but that's yeah. a bucket list. That's up there. All right, so let's get into how you first got into music. Um, Church. You know what I'm so, you were singing in the choir? Mm, you know what I'm whatever the music requires. Playing, singing, whatever. Okay. So what? How many instruments can you play? I know you can play piano. Mm -hmm. What else? Mm -hmm. Piano, guitar, sax. I do a little ones and twos, bass, oh, yeah. drums. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you learned that in church or? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, between church and being just self-taught. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you had a guitar at home, you were practicing all that mm -hmm. stuff. That's nice. That's nice. So your family got you that stuff, or school programs, classes? Like how did mm -hmm. you get into? Between my family and then me saving up my little ones and twos to get little okay. instruments, whatever I wanted to. So you was investing from young. I mean, yeah, I call it that. Okay. What was the first thing you bought on the music tip? <clears throat> um, drumsticks. But you know, after drumline, everybody bought drumsticks. <laughs> Okay, 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 that's cool. All right, so um, first time in the studio. First time in the studio. Yeah, walk us through that, for, that first day you locked in. Um, it was a studio in Mount Vernon, so shout out to Reggie. Uh, it, was still, it was Bedrock Studios, and yeah, you saw all the buttons and all that. I was like, oh, this is fire, because before that, I was just making music in my little, like, my little laptop or whatever, so that was like 20, like 15. Okay. So we're... Uh, oh, wow. So, mm -hmm. when, so when you was playing the instruments, how old was you at that age? That's like from like nine and up. Oh, so you didn't even get in the studio until a couple of years later? Mm, yeah, we're... Okay. Way later. So it made you want to lock in on music? Like making music? Yeah, like making music. Because of course, songwriting came first or producing came first? Like what came first? Um, Producing. Okay. For sure. Um... Yeah, making beats and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Got my little ones into it with my laptop and stuff. And then eventually, I just didn't like what people was writing on my beats. So I just, word. And that was it. Then you started writing for them. Writing for the people, then word. Yeah. Then you're like, fuck it, I'm going to just do it myself. 
guess. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, placements early on. Who are some placements that you got? For the people that don't know. Um, I feel like it's not time yet. I don't really be I don't really be talking too much about the actual songs and the people that I wrote for too much. Only because now hear me out for real. I feel like once you start doing that, people put that stigma on you as just that writer guy. They start saying, Oh, Capella, you just talking about the nigga with that who wrote that, whatever like that. I'd rather people just know me for it. I think everybody knows you for an artist. I get it. As yeah. But I just don't even wanna I'm chilling for right now. We good. Okay. And plus on top of that too, if I'm and writing for somebody, I don't wanna I don't want anybody to look at them no way or whatever like that. You know what I'm saying? We did the business. Everything is lit. We got our plans. I mean, some stuff we... is on Google. Like just... For sure. Okay. So when they do their Googles, they can do what they do. I but do. I don't think it's my place to discredit artists, you know, because I know how that goes with... I know how the, how the image of people look once you start doing that mm. to people. So I wouldn't want yeah. um, And how do you feel about NDAs? Do you want to keep it private? Like, basically, NDA, they got to keep it private. But what I'm saying is, are you like... Okay with signing the NDA? Like if you do write somebody's song? NDA? Yeah. Uh like ghostwriting? I mean, yeah. you I mean, yeah. First, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I've done that. No, I'm saying like okay. The splits you just look a lot different. It. The splits and the bread looks that's a lot what different. I'm saying, like, right. That's why I don't mind it. That's why I I don't need so to either or. So okay, cool. there's certain situations where it's like, all right, cool, you get the writing back, your name on the credits, the whole vibe. Uh-uh. Then there's certain situations where it's like you know you're not necessarily at the forefront or whatever like that, but the percentage is different. Make it, make sure it makes sense. That's it. Okay. All right. Um, did you ever Google yourself? Me? Yeah. Have you ever Googled yourself? Oh, yeah. I've done it before, yeah. Okay. When you Google, what you looked up? What did I look up? Yeah. You just typed in my name. She pop up. So, at the bottom, it shows, like, the questions that people ask the most mm-hmm. about you. Mm-hmm. People ask your height. Mm-hmm. And people look up your net worth a lot. Did you ever look up your net worth? My net worth? Yeah. I looked it up the fir- I looked it up the last time I looked at my net worth was like twenty twenty one. Okay. And it was so wrong. <laughs> I was like, all right, this I'd never really revisited it. You didn't look at it again? No. Okay, so right now it's at three million. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. The numbers are just so <laughs> off. That's not that's nowhere near close. That's <laughs> okay. We just, you know. Okay. <laughs> God is good. Okay. <laughs> For sure. All right, so when um so the album is finally here. Mm-hmm. Finally, you had us waiting a long time. Mm-hmm. Was that on purpose? No, not necessarily. Some of it was on purpose. Sometimes it was not. Mm-hmm. But we just made it make sense. Why did you keep pushing it back and pushing it back? Uh, for different reasons. You know what I'm saying? I felt like it wasn't time yet, or there were certain situations where it was like, like for example, uh, with the first deal that I was in. It's not that it was a necessarily a bad deal, but I felt like at the time when I was supposed to drop an album. I didn't think that it would have gotten the right push that it needed. I didn't think that it would have been the right time, and I don't think that it just would have been. I just didn't think that it was the right moment for it to get a real, real fair chance. People are really getting to know me for real. Uh, I feel like with this tape right now, if you listen to the whole thing, you almost kind of get to know me better type shit, and I feel like I was able to introduce myself, and I wouldn't have been able to do that properly if I dropped in 2021 when everybody wanted me to. You really feel like that? I feel like all the momentum was high. Everybody was highly anticipating it. Mm-hmm. But it wouldn't have been the right tape, and it just wouldn't have been the right So situation. you feel like musically you evolved? Or- musically I've evolved. I've been able to, like, even, like, what's necessary to even put on a tape. It was just so, it's just, I've just learned so much now. I feel like this is just a way better tape than I would have gotten then. Man, I feel like even for the moment, I feel like everything worked out, because I feel like right now, it almost had no chance but to do the organic thing. Okay, you wanted the organic thing. I mean, like, everybody needs a little push. No, so, like, I'm not, so it's not like I wanted necessarily, mm-hmm. but I don't mind how it happened because now the, I don't mind the narrative that came with it. Because now it's, if this shit goes number one, it's because the people really pushed it into number one for real. You're oh. watching it happen in real time. Okay. So at that time, and mind you, it's still no antics. It's still no celebrity girlfriend. It's still no. You know, we've been seeing your tweets. You understand you what I'm saying? Off. Nah, for real. <laughs> because it it's, it goes unchecked. You heard. So mm-hmm. I feel like realistically, the moment right now, mm-hmm. I feel like it's working out perfectly how it needs to. Okay. So feedback from the project. Have you been liking the feedback? Mm-hmm. Have you been not liking. It? Yeah, it's been Things not like as much it? argument as I thought. Huh? It's not as much argument as I thought. What you? You thought people was gonna argue about it? I so when the 
building up to the tape, mm -hmm. in my head, I thought that as soon as I dropped it, it would be heavy argument. Did it live up to the? Did it live up to the hype? Did he? Uh, uh, did it? Oh, is it gonna fall on deaf ears? Did it not, is it not what it needed to be? Is it not the right introduction? Uh, I thought it was gonna be heavy argument within yeah. a lot of back and forth. Yeah. It's not as much back and forth as I expected. God is good. We doing what we do. You are. Yeah. 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 Even Joe Budden gave you some love on his podcast. Yeah. Everybody. I feel like right now we're in a good space where everybody even feels comfortable with their change of heart okay. nobody's even like fighting the change of heart it's just no problem now you got it cool no problem um did anybody react to it that shocked you yeah cool. for sure you them out? no i don't really got it you know what i'm saying shocked but you because they were talking bad and now they're talking good crazy or shocked you but it's, it's not like it was just one or two you got to really understand realistically yeah because you remember my ears, my ears to the streets for real you know what i'm saying i'm really outside if you know me you know i'm really yeah. you know what i'm saying so I really hear everything. I really see everything for real. Mm -hmm. I'm just being honest. So I hear, oh, I heard all the talks for so long, and I was just waiting my turn. I said, no, no, no problem. I hear it 100%. Okay. So, you know what I'm saying? Now, and again, organically, with no extra problems, the music is going, like, viral outside. It's not even like there's a viral post yeah. with the tape or anything. It's just doing what it do. Yeah, and even when you dropped Baychester, I feel like that was a lit one, too. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was the leading single for the thing, pretty much. Pretty much now, yeah, word. Yeah, so what I'm saying is like, when dropping Bay Chester, the album was done or it wasn't done? No, I turned in the tape two days before the tape was set to drop, so I turned it in the the 19th. Mm. Word. We was editing it all up to that last moment type shit. Are, do you feel like you're a perfectionist? Um. Ah, uh, yeah. Yes and no. Yes and no. It just depends. On certain things, yeah, I'll be trying to do things to a T. And then there's certain modes where I'm like, yo, if it feels good, we out. We out. Let's go. Let's go. Whatever. We out. Okay. So it really depends on the mood. I feel like people get to watch me just doing shit <laughs> in real time. Right. Because you used to go live and like do your music on live too. Mm -hmm. Everybody watched this album happen. Like from scratch. Yeah. Yeah. Did you like, why you didn't like document and like put it on? You did put some stuff on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You did. You definitely did. So now... Now that the tape is out, yeah. everybody can now go back to those vlogs see and story. see the tape. Yeah. Because you were shopping freestyles in between, too. Look at ones and twos. Yeah. Was that just to warm people up? or? No, it was just on some, I know the tape is coming to a closing or whatever like that. And just for the sport of it, realistically, mm -hmm. I, I like if I wasn't getting paid for making music, I was doing this before. Like This is what I really love to do. So if I hear a fire song... This maybe something wrong with me. I'd be like, "Yo, this song is fire." But if if what if this was from the perspective of a wavy uptown, you are, <laughs> and I just be wanting to remix, not remix everybody's show, but I just be wanting to just you know what I'm saying, provide a different perspective. That's it. So for the people that have never been to New York, mm -hmm. don't know the uptown vibes, they can see from your videos, but they probably never been here. Can you mm -hmm. explain like an uptown vibe? Explain like what a day just, a day in the life of this. It's just wavy. <laughs> I'm just I, like I don't really like I just feel like there just be so much to do. It's just and I feel like the attitude uptown is just so wavy. It's just like I just love it, not nah, for real. Cause I know the different parts of New York that's wavy. Shout out to Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying? Queens. You know, yeah, yeah, I had it for sure. Yeah. But I feel like it's just a certain like you see like people like all right, so boom, for example, me, Diani, and Ron Suno, we all from Koa. And if you really think about it, it just makes sense. Because realistically, it's just starting to vibe with just, I don't know, it's just like, yeah, we here, like, what we doing? Like, you feel me? Yeah. So uh, that's really it to describe it. It's a different type of energy, different type of vibe. Um, do people compare you to other artists? Um, and if so, who? Not as much anymore. Yeah. So, uh, I was going to say, before they compared you to who? Um, I was getting, so in the Caribbean world, it was like the craniums. And then the Dexter Daps with certain things, but then on like the hip hop type. hip hop side, it would get like Ty Dolla Shiny and like certain shit. You know what I'm Tory saying? Tory Lane. Tory for sure. Yeah, because they said that um, they said that it was like a Chinks tape vibe, and mm -hmm. you retweeted it. Yeah, if I was just like just that, just a shout out to Tory. But I mean, if you're saying Chinks tape in terms of yeah, well, I guess with the samples and just the in and out. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, I should sample. You got a couple samples in I'm there. here for it. Yeah, well, so yeah. shout out to that if they, if they see yeah. it in that. So, you also got a toy feature. Uh, so, how did y'all connect? Who? You and Toy Lance. 
Oh, I mean, he's like me, where he just for the sport of it, he just be wanting to smack the shit out of just every record. So he really came to the studio on just on a mission. Like he laid nah for real, there's something wrong with that nigga. That's what I'm saying. That's why I always he's this he's dumb nice. So he came to the studio, recorded a verse for Gallus, mm-hmm. went home, sent me a next verse for Gallus. A whole different joint. Okay. Then the verse that we heard in the car on the radio was a different verse to Gallus. <laughs> he came to the studio when he recorded his verse. He said, all right, before I even record, before I even smack the shit out of this Gallus joint, what else you want me on before we even get started? I said, oh, nah. It's, <laughs> this is some crazy Leo shit. I'm jacking it. It's a movie. <laughs> Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Because all my niggas, are, you already know my sessions be, you know what I'm yeah. saying, pretty ignorant. So all my niggas was like, yeah. oh, nah, it's another, oh, all right, coffee. <laughs> so that's when we did the whole team joint. So we did that, the whole team joint that's on the tape before... We ago. did anything Point else. Okay. Sidebar on that too. If you watch the vlog, the verse that he did on that uh-huh. is not the even the verse that made it to the album. Oh, he recorded yeah. a whole different verse on that beat. <laughs> wow. Okay. So um. So <laughs> when Tori and the Megan thing happened, mm-hmm. you tweeted about it. You got a lot of backlash, I guess, because you stood with Tori. Yeah, it was short though. Because realistically, it was. No, it was short. It was short. All the situation when it comes to me, trust me, in and out, please. I don't, <laughs> don't be for real. I said what I said, and that was it. Okay, yeah, definitely free Tory though. We fuck with Tory for sure. Too. All right, so Gallus is how old now? How old is that song now? Three years now, Three I guess, years technically. Now. Mm-hmm. You was performing that song everywhere for mm-hmm. a solid three years. Mm-hmm. Are you tired of performing that song? No, that should get me hype every single time. Every time? Mm-hmm. So, okay. like, all right, boom. What people don't really understand is... I don't think people really, fully, really understand how, how big it actually is. It's kind of like an uptown sta- staple yeah, right now. Yeah, but so the thing is, so for New Yorkers, New York heard it on its way up through the whole everything. Mm-hmm. Gallus is still going number one in certain countries and shit like that. There's okay. still certain countries that are just hearing about it and saying, what the hell is this, and going stupid. Um, People don't really understand the magnitude of it, really what we did with that first joint. So now with mm-hmm. Baychester, now that's running with it. And now we have the nerve to drop a tape. It's going stupid. Right. So they're going to keep referring back to the Gallus joint. And I'm not mad at it. It's wavy. For me, I feel like Baychester definitely replaced Gallus for me a little bit. It's like a certain formula you have down packed. I don't know how to explain it. You know what I'm saying? I'm producing but- like a DJ. That's it. <laughs> oh, if you listen to the songs on the tape, I'm just producing like a DJ, realistically. It's not really some of these don't even some of the songs on the tape don't even have like a hook or anything. Some of them is just a series of moments. Like it's a song that's a series of moments rather yeah. than a song, realistically. And your songs are always short. In and out. In and out. Mm-hmm. What's that about? I feel like and especially in R and B, I feel like people kind of expect us to do like three or four minutes of ooh wah, ooh wah, oh baby, oh baby. And that's not really my thing for real. Cause like I said, I produce like a DJ. I'm not I'm kinda try, I wanted this tape to be kind of the soundtrack to outside. This year, mm-hmm. so I didn't really deem it necessary to be just dragging it and doing a whole bunch of miscellaneous whatever. Once the thought is done, can we get the next thought? Can we can we get into the next vibe? Mm, That's it. it. Or run it back if you want to hear this vibe again. Yeah. So somebody else did an interview. Pink Panther did an interview saying that songs don't need to be over two minutes. Well, I mean, I feel like that's. Mm, and she was like, to say, need bridges and all of that. So we don't need bridges? Yeah, yeah. nah, there's bridges all over this album. I was fake wild. Nah, I know it is. So that's what I feel like, yeah, nah, that's... I um, feel like you do a lot. Even though it's short, you do a lot. Like, it's a different vibe every time. People are fully fed, even in their little two minutes, realistically. No matter how much they complain, realistically, after each song, you really do feel well fed. You're not really saying, where's the rest? Ever. Realistically, never. Yeah. Even when they complain about it, they don't. Yeah. And it kind of helps, like, running it back, too. Like, you definitely run songs back a lot. Once you fuck with it for a You feel what I'm saying? Realistically, did you really need an extra two minutes of Gallus? No. It just <laughs> sounds good to complain about it on Twitter. <laughs> okay, so what is, how do you feel about the state of R&B right now, though? It's beautiful. Yeah? Mm-hmm. You're jacking it. For sure. Okay. All the biggest moments in the club always are the R&B moments, and nobody really notices it besides mm-hmm. the musicians. That's how so I take- right now, Sexy Red is having a huge moment. Why? That whoo- they're singing in the club. The Keisha Cole is still, the, still got the biggest moment in the club. Fantasia, when I see you, it's nuts when that song comes on in the club. You heard? Mm-hmm. Money Long, where her song, she keeps going crazy with R&B ass songs. She ain't making another upbeat like that. She's making vibes and it's going viral. Brent stays in his pocket. R&B is doing great. People just, 
don't like to give it credit for some reason, mm, but we're selling out arenas and all of that. Yeah, Usher doing his big one. So how did you feel about the Usher tribute at the BT Awards? We just talked about that. Realistically, the yeah. Usher tribute was interesting. Are you anti the like, well, you you tweeted this. What? I remember back off the tweet. Too busy trying to prove a point, art is suffering for it. Mm-hmm. Dragging it with, all, with these all women things, all women everything, everything shit nowadays, TV shows, every Wilson was right there, Luke James right there. This tribute could have been incredible, shaking my head. Mm-hmm. Um, who do you feel like should have did the Usher tribute? Um, the people or that I listed, there was, I mean, I, so first of all, shout out to the people that did perform, because I know they worked very hard yeah. on their Usher tribute, for sure. Shout out to them, shout out to everybody included, for sure. But, you know what I'm saying? There was just a lot of artists that I feel like would have even done it greater justice and would have, you know what I'm saying? I feel like Usher is such a legend. I don't think that, um, hmm. <laughs> get, get it out. Let's, let it go. I feel like there were certain options. Like the shout out to Avery Wilson and the, like Eric Bellinger. There's so many male artists, and I feel like BT just missed an opportunity to shine light on dope R and B artists coming up. Male R and B artists coming up. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um, do you feel like y'all have do you feel like y'all get the support or recognition? R and B artists? Do you feel like you're R and B artist? If yeah. Yeah, right. Because mm-hmm. I don't know, I feel like you're so like, it's so vibey music. I don't know. Because it's like in between hip hop and RB to me. That's why I, I guess I'll be like singing to the R&B. pace of a rapper, I guess. But realistically, I'll be mm-hmm. singing, singing, miss. Once you really listen to the tape for real, I'll be singing, singing. You heard? Like, <laughs> I do though. I'm just, I'm just, you know what I'm saying? I do. I'll be, I'll be slipping a little whatever. You gave but just us because mad of the pace. different genres on the tape though. You went into, um, and in each genre and every song on the tape, I was fake wild. If you try to sing along to the tape, once you get a chance, yeah, once you, after you hear the song, I, I, yeah, after you hear the tape, then listen to it again with the intent of singing along with it. You're going to be like, oh no, this nigga was singing, singing. Hold on. Okay. For sure. That's a shame. Wow. Okay. But um, do you feel like R&B artists get the recognition that they deserve? I think they do. I think we do. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Summer Walker's wilding. There's mad people that's wilding right now. R&B is really great right now. Low key. Okay. And I see you got Jada Kingdom, Dream Doll. How do you feel about collabing with girlies? I love it. I yeah. be dragging it. The song that I have, you song with Jada Kingdom and Dream Doll, Journey Montana's on that too. I love collabing mm-hmm. with the shorties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she bought it too. Shout out to Journey. I feel like she got one of the best verses on the tape. Bro? I feel like, yeah, I feel like we were able to shine a light on a lot of, you know what I'm saying, dope artists that don't really okay. get that on so the tape. So you think that's one of the best verses on the tape? Easily. For Who's sure. Your, what's your favorite song? My favorite song? It depends on, on my mood. Because realistically, I really feel like I have a song for every mood. I'm not just saying that. So like some days I wake up like and you. I feel like feel like money in the air. So <laughs> or, or, or fly <laughs> shit. That's all we you know. Then there's some days where I might feel like one more chance or some shit like that. Or there's some days I might feel like, you know, just in that mood, more three o'clock in the morning. I'm thinking about <laughs> I'm thinking what you want, like the song with me and Jacquees or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? It's a yeah. different song for every mood. I don't really have a it's favorite right a now. Different song. Were you selective with the features? Um, to an extent, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, is there tracks that could have made it but didn't make it? Well, we made mad songs. I know you made mad songs because I feel like you're always in the studio. Always. So is there gonna be a deluxe? No, it's V1 and then it's V2. I feel like people be dragging it. Well, the deluxe, the deluxe, deluxe, deluxe. Did you like the album? All right, cool. This is the next thought. Okay. That's you said it. you in and out. You said that. You said that. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, Question. How many niggas was mad that your girl be in their videos? Because you always got shorties in the videos. I feel like at this point now, I don't think people be as mad because I really do vibe responsibly. I'll be chilling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like you was one of the people early on that had a lot of girls in the videos, and then now it's like the whole slizzy. That's movement the thing. With all the girls right now, everybody got everybody music video look like the Gallas music video or something, for sure. Yeah, I'm here for it though. I'm jacking it. Bring the city out. It's beautiful. <laughs> no, I'm jacking it for. Her. Do you feel like you get the recognition you deserve, or do you feel like? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, mm-hmm. from the city too. I think so, for sure. Yeah, I'm like yeah, I feel like even the people that like even like I don't even think I have proper haters in the city. Realistically, mm. I thought I did, but I don't think I really do for real. What's a I proper feel like mo- hater? Because I don't think people dislike me as much as they thought they did, or just or do or thought they do. Period. Because realistically, it was a lot of people that were kind of just 
waiting for like they just I feel like everybody kind of was like okay nah this is some shit but we just need something we just need something give us an album give us a something <laughs> we just need the moment right now yeah, this season's a lot I feel like right now the city is gonna be on fire I talked about it on Twitter too when I get my first like award award with the speech and all that like when I get the first great uh BT award for VRV1 and I feel like the city need to see a whole bunch of uptown niggas on the stage with the wavy speech because everybody gonna say, "Ah, oh, boy, here we go." Once they know that, I'm gonna get my little. So you gonna done. come with all gang on stage? Going crazy. I feel like the city just needed me to see see me on that shit. The VMAs, all types of Grammy because I know it's really cool right now for all the artists to say, "Oh, fuck all these awards. I don't give a fuck all these accolades." Shut up. I want all of them shits. <laughs> give me everything, especially for this take. How long we worked on this? We want everything. And I feel like the city just wanted to see us do some. Flash, it's time to drop. It's time for that run. They, the city hasn't even seen me on the Breakfast Club or nothing yet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They haven't even seen me with the flex, the Funk Flex one with all the bombs and all that. Not even for <laughs> gallons. So yeah. I feel like for this run now, I feel like people are starting to realize, you know what I'm saying? He might be a little annoying or whatever like that, but nah, he might be it. Word. So I feel like it's a good run right now. It's definitely a good run. You've been doing your thing. What's next on your to-do list? <laughs> So, Obviously, Breakfast Club. Oh, you talking about with the like, interviews and the, stuff like that? I'm just an old the run in general, I feel like. What's next for you? August 3rd, I'm shutting down New York City. Okay. For sure. Because I never did. So even with this whole run, this is timing is everything. I never did my own like fully, like full headlining show. Yeah, I see you come out. A lot of people bring you out. You feel me? A lot Beat of people, people in the head with the, just, with the, just, just <laughs> the idea of just me, period. And yeah. then now... Now that the tape is out, I want to wait until I have a full body of work to really mm. go crazy. Now we shut down New York City. You mm. feel me? That day is going to be stupid. My birthday's August 2nd, kicks off Leo season. Okay. We're going to do an August 3rd, that Saturday. Okay. You feel what I'm saying? So you want to shut it down. The, so, and what's fire about this is the city's fucking with my, they fucking up my rollout. Because what was supposed to happen is we were supposed to do it at one venue, okay. but it's looking like we might not be able to do that venue due Yo, to capacity shows issues. In, yeah, shows in New York is kind of hard. Nah, our problem was just the capacity. The good yeah. thing about our reputation is nothing bad happens at my events or anything like that, so we don't really have certain yeah. issues that people be having. Yeah, even when you booked, I feel like you always have a smooth, like... Fresh. In and out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We've all responsibly. No matter what they, we're, <laughs> oh, so realistically, that show was going to be pretty crazy. Okay. But yeah, so that's going to be like the full-fledged tour and shit like that, but this is going to be the first time people's going to be able to see me I feel like most of my fans and all that, they don't even know that I play the guitar. They don't even know what was really going on Are you going to do the guitar and everything on stage? That's why we set up the tape like this, because that's why you hear certain songs on the tape that's just me and the guitar, mm -hmm. or a certain song on the tape that's just me and the piano. So we set up the, the tour with this tape. Mm, that's why, that's why. So in the creative process, when planning all this stuff, is it you, you have a team, like how are you planning all the this? The gang, I like the family. I'm yeah. telling you, it's a whole bunch of... Make, if you ever been in one of our sessions, it's a whole bunch of niggas just like me. We just be like, yo, what we doing? What's the vibes? What if we loud? Is that overwhelming having mad brains, mad creative? Hell ideas? no, no, overwhelming. Hell no, especially if it's a whole bunch of brains in there that you trust. Because mm -hmm. I know, like for example, my nigga Meech, realistically, half of the time he don't like shit I do. He don't like half of the shit I be doing. But then after we further review it, I be like, yo, nah, bro, what you said makes sense though. And I'll revisit it and be like, nah, bro. So he's not even, he's not even coming from a perspective of a hater. He was dead ass right. Damn, we might have to turn down this fucking kick or might turn down this or whatever the fuck it is. You feel <laughs> what I'm saying? Okay. So like if he's loud in the room, I'm not saying this is somebody that's loud in the room. I'm saying it's somebody that's, you <laughs> well, know what you know saying? me. So you know he loud. They're just going to offer a different perspective and stuff like that. And I know I'm so sure in my opinions about things, it's like, or if I hear something that sways where I'm at with it, nah, that might be it. Wait, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. So, you know what I'm saying? I don't mind that. So, you don't mind all the ideas being thrown at you? I don't. I'm too sure on what I think. So, I okay. feel like it'd be wavy. Okay. So, you like the going back and forth. Okay, cool. That's something all like right, that. So, but final decisions are definitely ultimately up to you. Always. Right? For sure. Okay. All right. So, I know you signed a girl group back then. Mm -hmm. What happened with that? I was broke. So, like, I had... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Nah, wow. So, I was, like, mad homeless up until, like, Yalis. So, like, I was, like, visionary, so it sounded cool. Like, hey, guys, I, I, yeah, you know Because it's not like they even knew each other or anything. I kind of just put them together. Okay. And, like, they trusted me because they trusted, like, what I, like, I would send them the references. 
mm-hmm. and the whole arrangements and all that. You know what I'm saying? Just real musician shit. Mm-hmm. So they trusted the idea and the vision of it, but I was only able to get them up to a certain point. Because, I mean, everything comes but down to fits and all that. You just got to make it yeah, make sense for expensive. Her. Yeah, Oh, my God. They're mad expensive. <laughs> but I just knew I liked the idea. I felt like a girl group in that time, 2016, I thought that that would have been like so different, so fly, just different. If it's done right, it was borderline. It was either going to be mad corny or OD wavy. And I feel like the difference would have been bread. Mm. Me? Okay, so if you was to rebuild a girls group right now, mm-hmm. three girls, who would it be? Oh, just in, right now? in general, in, um, anywhere around the world, whoever. I can't, I can't, uh, that's Why? not fair. Why? I mean, everybody's doing their thing. I'm saying, you're, you're making a group, you're going to... All right, so on some uh, who's awesome out that people would know. All right, yeah. cool. So Summer Walker, Summer Run with her, she's dumb nice. Her, you know what I'm saying? The artist, her. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, and. One more. Because those two nice, right? There. Honey Baby. Oh, okay. New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a vibe. That's fire. All right, so we're going to play a game. No, nah, shit. I'm going to. <laughs> Nothing crazy, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Nothing crazy. So I'm going to start the sentence, and you just got to finish the sentence. Like, my favorite color is okay. whatever. Okay. My favorite thing to do on my day off is? Um, do you have a day off? Cause you yeah, I'll be, I'm on day off to do music. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm not going to lie. Where... Okay. Uh, when I get hungry at 3 a.m., my go-to is? Cereal. What kind, what's your favorite cereal? Mm. Now, I mean, French Toast Crunch been doing this thing lately. Okay. Okay. Shut up. Let me just fire. That's what we're going to be That's not <laughs> crazy. <laughs> I'll never forget when. Um, When I got brought out to Madison Square Garden first. Okay. Who brought you out? Meek. First time? That was your first time at Madison? Yeah, my first time in all these joints was being brought out. I wasn't, oh, I wasn't no going to shows ass nigga. So before. me brought you to the first time I seen bro. That's mm-hmm. lit. All right. Um, the craziest thing a girl said to me was, um, I want my kids to have your nose. <laughs> okay, a song that'll calm me down is, mm, song about me. Last song on my tape. Okay. People in New York are wavy. I can't wait until I mm, sell out Madison Square Garden. That's on the bucket list. Mm, but that's gonna come. Yeah, for sure. My style is mm, sure. Sure. Mm. Mm, I thought you were going to say wavy, vibe. vibe yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay, okay, sure. All right. My funniest memory is... Funniest? Mm-hmm. Mm. I don't know. We do a lot of funny shit, man. Okay, okay, okay. Niggas had me fucked up when... Um... Mm, when I guess me- when they thought gas was it, like... When I thought it was it? Yeah, when I thought that was like... That was the end of the road. Like, are you crazy? Mm-hmm. Oh, that, that was you just getting started. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'll never forget when... You didn't do that one already? No. Oh, I'll never regret when I... I'll never regret? Mm-hmm. I'll never regret... I when I... What, what's something you did that you like... I feel good about this decision or... Oh, deciding to become an artist, to get my credibility mm. up, to become a better executive. Type shit. If you want to impress me, you have to. Mm. Vibe responsibly, don't do the most. <laughs> okay. What's what's doing the most? Like, do you not like loud girls? Like, what's the, what's your turnoffs? Mm. Do you have a lot? Are you picky? You seem picky. I seem picky. Yeah, you seem picky. I'm yeah. just hypothetically. Right? No, I'm not really picky, but okay. um. But like, what's doing too much? What's not vibing responsibly? Um, I feel like people. It's different though. It's different with different people because what's doing too much for certain people is not really doing too much for other people. But mm-hmm. I feel like people, you should kind of just know. Mm-hmm. Yo, know yourself. You're like you know certain certain shorties when they're loud. Certain shorties, their voice is just loud. It's just them. Yeah. Then you there's certain the shorties that it's like. Why are you being loud right now? Because <laughs> you know that's not even your... What are you doing? Mm. You feel me? Yeah. Vibe responsibly. Know yourself. 
Mm-hmm. You are, and that's it. What are your turnoffs? What are my turnoffs? Yeah, like what's um, the major red flag? Like you're not just, going for like insecurity type shit like that. Because mm-hmm. I don't think really think I'm too too picky picky picky. Mm-hmm. I just like fire and just sure overall type shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So when I feel like you're not really sure of yourself and you're just insecure, you're just insecure, just too like miss miss. It just now, <laughs> not, it just now work. You gotta not be confident in your shit, shorty. Yeah, it's the only way it's gonna work with somebody like me, realistically. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So That's anything that just seems just. Insecure or something where it's like, miss, yeah, no, it just can't work. Type shit. So, Over. why do you feel like, are you single? Mm-hmm. Why do you feel like you're single right now? Um, just ain't the right situation pop up yet. That's it. I'm not like opposed to it or nothing like that. I'm not like okay. on some old now. I'm just, it's just, <laughs> we vibe responsibly. We don't really force no vibes. If it makes sense, it makes sense. Okay. When you get a show, do you feel like you want to pop out with her? Like, go public with your girl or? Um, maybe it depends on the situation for real. Cause I mean, for in order for me to do that, it would have to be like official, locked in, yeah. I'm so official, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Cause otherwise, I don't mind going to the um award shows and shit like that by myself or mm. the gang or whatever the like games, that. Yeah. Or so we can do some flashy. I can okay. take a shorty, but just gotta make sense. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah, you locked into the music right now. Mm-hmm. Part two coming soon. Mm-hmm. Let us know what else is on the in the way on the way. Um, so I'm dragging it. I have damn. I wish I brought all the vibes and all that. But VR V1 the cologne. Okay. You know what I'm saying will be available at the show as well. I don't know if y'all seen the leathers. Y'all seen the leathers? The leather jackets. The jackets? I'm yeah. dragging I see it. You heard? Your man's be wearing those. I'm, the oh, you talking about those? the? Oh no, you talking about the um. The, the, the family jacket. Talking about the no, that's for the staff. That's for that. I'm please, you could sell those to brand. Promote the brand. No, we have the other joints for oh, the yeah, people them too. So we okay. have the regular jackets that's outside of the staff joints, but we have the other wavy joints, the regular you know what Okay. Then? But then we have the leathers. So okay. Um, not to sound no way or nothing like that, mm-hmm. but I feel like there's certain brands, you know, what I'm saying certain leather brands and all that that we're making very lit, making a lot of money every year. You know what I'm saying? And they won't give us no deals, and that's no problem on them. You know, you, you do your business wherever you want to do your business, and that's mm-hmm. beautiful. But I feel like there's no reason for me to be, you know what I'm saying, being a part of the culture of just putting people, just Promoter. just for no reason. You know what yeah. I'm saying? If we can't make a situation, cause especially because we reached out to a couple of these brands, you know what I'm saying, to make it make sense. And you know what I'm saying? And I just didn't pr- like the response per se. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like we kind of the curators of the culture, they going to... They gonna vibe with whatever we do because it's really us. You heard. <laughs> so I feel like with the ATF leathers, I feel like the design of it, down to the design, down to the threading, is OD. You know what I'm saying? The, th- the thread count. Okay. So did you design it? Did you your team design it's it? It's me and the gang. You know what I'm saying? We make. Oh, so it, y'all just be locked in on everything. Just making it make sense. With okay. the colognes, we went through so many different scents because I had to make sure that it's comparable with all the other brands you you buy when you get money. You heard oh. the getting money ones. I've never heard an artist like make their own cologne. I feel like that's mad. Because they're not known for smelling good. That's one of our. That's one. <laughs> that's that's a big rumor about me. You understand me? You, yeah. so I feel like if yeah. at this point now we might as well. I'm 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 putting all these other brands on because we so known for smelling good for all that we might as well you know you can't beat us we could probably smell like us for a couple hours if you make it make sense you know what i'm saying okay they know it's for the they know it's for wearing the wavy jackets they know it's for wearing just certain things so we got all of that it's gonna be available at the show down to this you saw the vibe steppers the socks we got the baddies in the city. You probably, if you know a couple baddies, you're going to see it because it's, it's going to pop up on your timelines and all that. This, oh, you see? Oh, he got them right there. Look what's going on in the city of New York. Shimmy, mm-hmm. great quality, all that. Yeah. Sturdy vibes, too. Okay, why socks? Because at the Sky Palace, everybody know you got to take your shoes off. You know what I'm saying? When you come, oh, you, yes, when you come yes, into yes. my spot, okay. you have to take your shoes off. And it will be a plethora of shorties in there, and they start to panic when you say take your shoes off. And for us... Don't even worry about it, my mom. We got you. Don't yeah. even worry about it. You seen the 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 you seen the drawers, the ACF drawers? No. Beautiful quality. You no. see how with Ethies, if you know, you know. With Ethies, guys know why we don't fuck with Ethies, cause you know what that shit do. It, well, you know what I'm saying? Ethies. We try. It's PSD, over. Nothing? This shit is get out of the car proof. This shit is everything proof. The 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 vibe responsibly joints that we. I'm swear to God, the band is a little bigger. It's a little thicker. So we're just you're just sturdy. And I'm trying to show you what's going on. You heard? Okay. So we got those there. We got the rugby's. You know what I'm saying? You seen the ATF rugby's? No, what the fuck is this? Yo. See, this is what I'm trying to show you. So now, 
We got the whole not for real. So though. you're having a whole wardrobe too. Are you into fashion for sure? I love it, but of I was never know. So then yeah. my thing is though, I was not. I love watching fashion. Mm-hmm. I was never know the fashion ass nigga though. Okay. So I feel like I'll be robbing certain designers and stuff like that of an opportunity by me trying to wear all the hats. So resembling the right team of the most elite fashion designers and marketers and all that mm-hmm. to have the most the biggest brands. You know what I'm saying? Coming out of New York City, we need a new. Call Canal, new fool, something wavy to get behind. So you have the Alapac merch, and then you have Vibe Responsibly, the luxury clothing brand. The luxury clothing brand is what brings you the leathers and all that. Okay, so you've been playing this for a minute. I had about three okay. years, right? Yeah. Shit like that. So Vibe Responsibly, the album, Vibe Responsibly, the cologne, the brand, and all that. So Vibe Responsibly is the elegant, and then the... ATF, the... the, the, the is the, it more streetwear, or is it more luxury, like... Suit and tie, obviously not, not suit, suit and tie. tie. So, but you know I wouldn't say? say necessarily streetwear. Yeah, it's just like, it is just all on how you wear because it. It, it's we just selling wavy ass pieces. Okay, okay, okay. You understand me? Because with that leather, I could wear that leather with a, with a black t shirt and keep it calm or whatever like that. Or I could turtleneck up the vibe with the right, chain and, it, and wear right, it to it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's pieces that you could just dress okay. nicely. The merch is if you fuck with ATF. You know what I'm saying? Okay. If you fuck with us and the movement that we got going on, we inspire you all that. <laughs> fuck with that. Get the ATF vibe. Vibe responsibly is for, it's for my fashion. It's, it's, it's a certain genre of niggas that fuck with that. Type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so the socks, the drawers, the leathers, mm-hmm. the cologne. For sure. Damn. The cologne is like my baby. That's the one that I'm like, yeah, that's my. I'm actually low key excited about that because I've never heard an artist do cologne, and I I feel like. Like you said, they don't. Not everybody promotes smelling good. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's Uptown that's Dash coming. Sorry, last thing I want to promote by the way before we get over here. <laughs> yeah. So Uptown Dash, by the way, is coming as well. Um, phone, video game. You know what I'm saying? There's more people in the world with P- with phones than PS4s. I got me a little. You know what I'm saying? Get me out of the city. These shorties trying to chase me. You know what I'm saying? You know how that shit go. Whatever. Oh, get me out. Like you like subway, subway surfer, surfer? You know what I'm saying? But it's called Uptown Dash. Very wavy. You gonna get to learn the music more, mm-hmm. playing the games and stuff like that. So your music's in there too? Oh, you know what I'm saying? You're playing as me. Now, hold on. So you're playing as me. You might get tired of playing as me. So on the different levels and stuff like that, when we have, you know, songs like Bougie, you know what I'm saying? So when you get to the Bougie level, because it's a song for each level, when you get to that level, you might get tired of playing me. Forget playing Capella. Play as Jada Kingdom or Dream Doll or, or Journey Montana or something okay. fly like that. You heard? So they in there too. That's oh, of course. Yeah. Then the strings level, you know what I'm saying? The whole team fly level, mm-hmm. money pull up level with Skilly and all that. Mm-hmm. Let's make it make sense. I feel like this year, this decade, because I've been talking this whole, ah, uh, we about to, uh. <laughs> but the reason why I don't really shut the fuck up is because realistically, what me and my team right now are doing is we're setting tone for the rest of the decade. That's why I've been waiting to make sure I had the conversation with you the right way. I feel like between the touring business, and the other things that we have got we, that we have going, mm-hmm. we're gonna be able to provide a lot of jobs in the next decade. We're gonna be able to change a lot of lives in the decade, make a lot of new millionaires. Because all these different avenues, there's gonna be people that's gonna get rich just by being designers of the VR brand. You know what I'm saying? There's gonna be certain people that when we have like, because well, we're doing the short films as well, Alapac films, and that's like okay. my with the network and all that. We're mm-hmm. gonna be able to give people opportunity because not DreamWorks don't pick up everybody, Pixar don't that's pick up true. everybody. But I know a couple of, if we could put together some great, incredible 3D films, we could go crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We could tell great documentaries. We could do great things. I feel like we're going to be able to push the culture for real. And it really just takes somebody that's unapolog- unapologetically ready to take over all this shit for real. And I hope this inspires other niggas to say, oh, wait, I could do that too. So that it's a whole little, it ain't no monopoly. No, nah, come. <laughs> Everybody that says, no, fuck out of here. I'm the best executive. No, come out the woodworks. We need more JDs. We need more masterpieces. Right now, everybody want to be the artist. Nobody wants to, you know what I'm saying, change lives for real. And so, there's a lot of people, that's why a lot of people is making music and you know they have no business making music. So your goal is to do both for sure. Mm. Like CEO and still be an artist. But you say you want to be an artist forever. You say you don't want to retire. Mm. I just don't want to be in a situation where if I have a thought or something to express, I just can't do it. I always, I'm always going to be inspired. I write when I'm mad, okay. sad, happy, whatever the fuck. So I want to be able to express that whenever. Okay, damn. I want to get into a little bit of the other stuff, man. Like what? I just feel like that's a lot on your plate. But you have the team, of course. You have the team. So now this year, too, I've been really, really understanding the value of delegation. So trying to do, trying to do everything yourself, that's where arrogance comes into play. I feel like that's when it's, 
That's that's terrible. <laughs> it just sounds cool on Instagram. Yeah. But having a team and trusting the right people with certain things, that could make everybody very, very rich. I feel like that's when things really change for us. So nah, for sure. It's not as much. So how do you plate. decide for who's on your team and who's not on your team? Um, we decided to qualify. Let's make it make sense. Mm-hmm. That's it. Just make it make sense. So it's based on your vibe and how you feeling, or like me? Yeah. Yes, for sure. Okay. <laughs> yes. Well, well, you know, some people to say like they do good work, but they might be quote unquote hard to work with. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like those are something to work through, or that's no. something to work through? If someone is hard to work with, I don't want to work with them. But their work is good. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like the work is no. good, but it's because you have to be able to to function in this ATF system. You have to be able to be an asset to the team. You being good at what you do on an island, we're not interested in putting up <laughs> with anything just because you're nice at what you do. I'm nice at what I do. We're all nice at what we do here, yeah. and we can get along with each other. So there's no reason for so anybody to be So the reason I ask that is because you obviously not with the team you had before. Mm-hmm. Right, so like, what made you transition? Like, what was you not getting over different there, situations? Or? It was it was a whole slew of different reasons why we disconnect from different people or whatever like that. Mm-hmm. Certain people, not everybody's really meant to be in your life forever. Certain people mm-hmm. are really placing your life to either teach you things or you know what I'm saying, whatever mm-hmm. like that. But man, a lot of the people that I was that were in ATF before, mm-hmm. I can almost guarantee there's nobody that wasn't ATF before realistically. That can't get on the phone and call me, or that I can't get on the phone whenever I want to. So type it's still shit. like good, y'all on good terms. It's me. Okay, I like that you're taking accountability. That is you, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, because definitely everybody I feel like was fucking with you, and I feel like I don't know if it was your ego or you wasn't really feeling people vibes, but mm-hmm. when you was like coming up and gals was going crazy, you definitely was like in your own world, I guess. I feel like... Or you wasn't fucking with certain niggas? Like, f- oh, you're yeah. talking about just period, like industry-wise just period? Say, yeah, just not Yeah, I feel industry. like... On Clubhouse, he was making sure they stood on whatever they were saying. Yeah. <laughs> That's really all it was, realistically. So it, was, it wasn't it was easy. So coming in the game, especially for New York City artists, mm-hmm. it is easier for you to get in the game if you allow yourself to be little bro You are accepted <laughs> easily in New York okay. City. I'm from the town, so we all, everybody, all you and all the media people, everybody got nah, like. I definitely get what you're saying. It's a lot of ego and stuff like that. So now, picture me now. You can't. Little bro, you. You can't little bro me. You can't really say too much of really too much. So the only thing they can say is, well, he's cocky about it. I don't like that he's cocky about it. <laughs> That's it. It's not anything else except for just that, realistically. Did so, you feel like somebody was trying to little bro you? Huh? Everybody, when I first came in, everybody was trying to, yo, now come over here. If you move with us, we're going to get you certain looks. So now picture me coming in the game and somebody telling me the first year, yo, move with me and I can get you shit like Summer Jam and shit like that in Powerhouse. So now with me, I'm like, wait, I can get that by myself. This The song is going to go up. I'm going to be good. Telling that to a lot of these niggas, the industry niggas, the people that have been around yeah. for 10 years, the OGs they like, almost get offended when, yeah. you, when you say, what you, what you mean? You, 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 you little niggas is hard-headed. Hard-headed? I don't even know you. <laughs> so all the people that I pissed off in 2021, I didn't even know them the year before. So piss them off, realistically, how? If I, there's certain comments, you can't talk to me how you would talk to an artist that was put on. Or a younger I, artist. A lot of younger artists are immature, too. Even so I, I don't even understand. think it's immaturity because even if there's a 16 year old, I can't talk to the six. So the 16 year old with the machine, I can't talk to him the same way that I talk to the nigga that produced it, mixed so it, mastered it, wrote it, the whole vibe, then mm-hmm. put it out, and he signed. I signed myself to myself. Now picture how much I was pissing off the labels. Yeah. So you couldn't, you couldn't sign me in my first year. Mm-hmm. So it was a lot of audacity. That's really why everybody really didn't didn't like me. And it's all good. Cats out of the bag. We here with it now. So mm-hmm. we can talk about it now. It's three years yeah. later. Yeah. When I first came in the game, I signed myself to a- to ATF mm-hmm. so that you couldn't do business with Capella Gray, the artist. You can only do business. With ATF. You can only do business with the whole label. You have to sign mm-hmm. all of us, even though you only heard this one song. Right. That's why we're rich. Because at the end of the day, no, this okay. is what it I'm is. Sick, at the end of the day, you couldn't do business with me, so you couldn't. You're not talking to just some artist who's wide eyed or whatever mm-hmm. like that. You're talking to this new artist as a CEO. So there's certain conversations you can't have. So when I walk into a building, I say, "Well, I want all the masters," mm-hmm. and I produce it. Don't even look at my publishing, and I'll set up the shows when the album is done. Mm-hmm. Don't look at the touring. I need you for this, 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 and this. 
and we can move forward like this. This is what I need from you. I know what you need from me. Hey, Let's make it make I'm sense. With that shit. So now picture would. me. I'm homeless at this time. You heard? Mm -hmm. So now it sounds like audacity now because it's not even like I have on good clean sneakers in these meetings or nothing like that. So they think, who do you think you are? So now the rumors become, it's some nigga, so now picture you're at one label, you're going to hit up your friends at the other label and say, yo, it's a nigga coming. <laughs> Just know this nigga, he's a little hard headed. It's this young nigga, he, rah. when people meet me in person, they go, oh, it's this nigga's not, this is how it goes every time. Every time somebody meet me in person, they mm -hmm. say, oh, it's not, even, oh, I understand yeah. Why the? But I understand why you. Yeah. And that's it. So wow, I did not know that you signed yourself. So how did you learn that? Like, cause I feel like a lot of people come into the industry and you know don't really know much. I feel like that makes no sense now. I feel like in 2024, if you sign a bad deal, it is all your fault. Mm. We have access to. All the documentaries, all the books, all the yeah. everything. We done heard stories on stories on stories from artists. Where right now, at this point, if, for example, if you, in 2024, sign a 360 deal, it is all your fault, brother. A hundred percent. Because, you know, people say, like, oh, they tried to sway me this, buy me this, buy me that. Whole time, you know, it goes on the bill, on the tab and everything. Damn, so it's that's over. It. So realistically... So you was basically ahead of your time, pretty much, I guess. Or you basically beat the game. That's what it was kind of mad. Yes. Yeah. As soon as I got out of the first deal, the first thing I did was get back to the drawing board yeah. and go crazy with Baychester again. Nice. Okay. Building the momentum out of thin air, and now everybody's talking about this album out of nowhere. Mm. Do you have any regrets on how that went? How well went? The first deal? Just, or just yeah, period? just what? everything. How the deal went, um, changing the team. Do you have any regrets on like that? Nah, everything worked out how it needed to. So even yeah. with Capital, it's not even like we signed a bad deal. So that's why I can't really say anything too bad about... Now they said about, you got like a, one of the biggest deals over there. One of the greatest, for sure. We yeah, made history. I definitely had that. We definitely made history, for sure. <laughs> so with that... Oh, so with that, Gallus smacked the shit out of that deal. Right there. So we made history again. So did Gallus, did that song recoup everything? Just about everything needed. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, People don't really understand weird. what really is going down for real. And what's really everything. So the end, all of everything. Crazy. The writer, everything. And mind you, we did the business with Cash Money. The, the, you know what I'm saying? Because we sampled back that. That's up. Mm -hmm. We did the business with them early. So it worked out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So with that deal now, even with that, even with the other songs I had dropped, it's not like I didn't drop any songs between Gallus and Bates. We dropped other songs and stuff like that. But there were certain things like, the team had switched up at Capital. Like, as soon as I signed, like, three, yeah. four months after you know, that. You hire and fire people all the time, bro. I didn't know it was that quickly. I didn't know, I didn't know it could happen just like that. Yeah. So I'm signing, picture signing to a label, and yeah, the CEO, the yeah. CEO. So you got to really picture me now. After I signed, after I signed with Gallus, about three, four months after that, my A&Rs are gone. The senior vice president and the regular a and is gone. My CEO... Got fired from Capital. Over everybody you met with, nigga. Digital, my PR is announcing he's leaving. Everybody is gone. So at that point now, that's why we didn't drop the next single, Talk Nice, until literally the next year. Nobody really understands how crazy that is. I didn't drop Talk Nice until the following year. Yeah. That was a banger, too. You know what I'm saying? But it didn't get, but now, picture of Talk Nice dropped in like August, the August of the Gallus, the Gallus year or whatever the fuck. Um, He's timing. I, me personally, I feel like you would have had like a probably like a sexy red one. How like every song like hits, or like Fetty Wap even every song was hitting back to back to back. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think if you would have dropped at that time, it would have been fine too. That's why this run doesn't almost doesn't make sense because three years after, it's not supposed to be. It's a whole new energy right now. We can go crazy yeah. with Poison right now. We didn't we didn't go to radio with any of the songs. We didn't mm -hmm. go. Full fledged with anything yet? Because for the first couple of weeks, I just wanted the people to talk about it. Then we opened the floodgates. Let's go radio. Okay. Let's go everything. Yeah, else. I like that you're you not really into no gimmicks. You don't like all that extra shit. You kind of all organic. I feel me? That. We're viral for the music only, and then if anything is oh, capella is just capella, and that's yeah. it. That's the narrative. Wow, that's crazy. I'm always finding myself. Anything else you want to let us know? That's um. Wait, anything else on the way? Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? Other artists are dropping, you know what I'm saying? Monroe dropping, Did Brantford dropping. Did you sign dropping. more artists now? Because now you got coin now. We about, so to start, we about to start just rolling out the different artists. You about to see the different rollouts of different artists. Because I feel like it's just everything that is needed right now. Like, I feel like y'all need a new female wavy R&B artist mm -hmm. out of the towns. And I feel like y'all need it to be... On 
I feel like y'all needed to be real New York, real vibey, real mm. just authentic. We need a new, not Mary, but Mary Ashanti. We just need a new hook goat for the females right now. Mm. On some vibey shit, nothing sad. We don't need no more sad shit right no, now for R&B. No we don't need no suicide. We, I, we need some wavy, vibey, get money shit for the shorties. Okay. Singing. Y'all need a male rapper. Y'all need all of that. It's lit <laughs> right now. Okay, so you over there cooking up. Mm. You got the bag now. Would you do a, Would you do another R and B group? For sure, I would. Yeah. Is that in the works or no? Not even really starting that project yet, okay. but I've definitely been thinking about it for sure. Cause I, and I think, you know, what I'm saying it soon be time. It's not time right now. Probably in like the next like year or so. Okay. But that'll be different though. Wow. Okay. Because now they're gonna be flyer than everybody else, and they're gonna <laughs> the music is gonna be wavy. With the other. merch and the color, the, all that. You got the but crazy. even past that, just they're just gonna be just wavy. I feel like now we have the means and we have the looks or whatever like that to just. I feel like a girl group right now, especially if they wavy and they fly and they, you know what I'm saying, their music is really hitting like that. It's not a little cheesy, whatever. It's some wavy <laughs> shit for real. Yeah. It's out of here. It's got to be presented right. Right. Yeah. That's a lot of shit going on right now. Mm-hmm. So, anything? Last words? Um, nah, it's lit. Bob Responsibly, the album out right now. Everything else coming soon. The show August 3rd. Congratulations to the industry. The vibes are back. And that's it, basically. Congratulations to the industry. Like for sure, them, like, I feel like yeah. they needed this. Yo, you be. <laughs> you don't think so? I feel like right now what we did for New York City R and B right now, we just put a battery in just that whole genre right now. It's almost like in your face R and B. Like we here as R and B. It's nothing sad. It's nothing calm. Yeah. The energy isn't little. It's wavy. We needed this. I feel like, yeah, I feel like your project definitely came out a good time. I feel like New York has a lot of eyes on us right now. It's been the whole Slizzy movement. And shout out to them. Shout out to them. He's on the tape too. I'm oh, cheating. No. Me. I know. Hello. <laughs> but like that's one of the many. You got mad vibes on it, like I said. So it's just giving us something new. Mm-hmm. Caribbean like. vibes on there. Real uptown vibes on there. Oh, Wavy. I feel like I got. Everybody. I feel like I got everybody's best verse. Of 2021, I mean of 2024, between Jay Wan, he's having a huge moment. Mm-hmm. Young and May's back, Jada hello. Jada Kingdom went nuts on there. Mm-hmm. Dream Doors back, hello. Journey Montana, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We were wild and Tory Lanez went crazy. Thanks. Yeah. So, Jack word, it's lit. Everybody. All right, tell people how can they find you? How can they tune in? At Mayor Capella Gray on Instagram, on Twitter is Capella Gray, on. I got TikTok now. Cabela Gray. You so. want to take that? Hello. Check you out. Mm-hmm. <laughs>